Hey there, this is CUSD Math 8, Unit 5, Lesson 3 from your homework packet, Equations for Functions. All right, so as always, the first question, a few questions come from our book, and they want to make sure I don't give you those answers. So on this one here today, I'm going to go ahead and change a couple things. Instead of talking about quarters in my little homework check, I'm going to talk about dimes real quick. Okay, so I'm going to cross out quarters and turn these into dimes and do the same thing you're going to do except with dimes, but you're going to do it with quarters. Okay, so keep that in mind. My answer will be different than yours because I'm using dimes. All right, so draw an input-output diagram to represent the function. The function says the value, value v of your dimes in cents is a function of n, the number of dimes. Okay, so what we're saying here is that the number of dimes that I have is a function of, or sorry, the value, I should say, gotta think backwards. The value of the money I have is a function, is a function of how many dimes I have, all right? So if I have one dime, one dime, I know that one dime has a value of 10 cents, I'm gonna end up over here with 10 cents, okay? So how do I get that 10 cent value from what I put in here? Okay, so we're gonna call this over here our number, we'll call that n, and we'll call this variable over here our value. To get from our number to our value, I have to do something to the number to find the value. So whatever the number is gonna be, we're gonna multiply that by the value of one dime. And one dime has a value of 10 cents. So we could say 10 cents times the number of dimes will tell me the value of my dimes. So if I had, in this case here, um, if I had two, we do two times 0 0.10, ended up with 20 cents. As an equation, the way we'd write this here is we take this function rule, which is 0 0.10 times n, and we make that equal to our value, which is the same thing as here. The number of dimes times the value of the dimes of one dime equals the total value altogether. Now let's use this equation to find the output when the input is 10. So if my input is 10, that goes in the n section here, we would say 0.10, the value of a dime, times having 10 dimes is going to equal our value. So 10 times 0.10 has a value of 1.00, or $1 becomes our value. Now in our case here, we're looking at our independent and our dependent value. The independent value is going to be the what you put into the machine, right? the function um, input output diagram. The dependent one is going to be what you get out of it because our value depends on how many dimes there are. So that's an example of what you do if we're talking about dimes. In your case, you're gonna be looking at quarters, so you can solve that one using this as a help, okay? All right, moving down. Section two, solving for x once again. I'm gonna do a couple of these here. I'm gonna do a and I'm gonna do d. All right, so looking at a fraction one, first of all. Again, I can choose to uh, subtract this around and have, leave fractions there. Uh, last time I did not do that. Last time I went ahead and I cleared the fractions by multiplying everything by five. So let me show you that real quick. If I take this, and I multiply this side by five, and I multiply this side by five, five times five, two or five, those would reduce out, cancel out, and you're left with just two X here, okay? But five times negative three is a negative 15. And that equals five times one fifth, which is five over five, which is just one. So this is pretty, you know, a little bit easier to solve here. I can add uh, 15, sorry, to both sides. I have 15 both sides. So I have two X equals 16. Divide both sides by two. And we're left with X equals eight as a solution. Again, I could have solved this by doing two fifths X minus three equals one fifth. I could add three to both sides. This is a whole number and a fraction, so I'd have two-fifths x equals three and one-fifth. And I'd have to multiply five times three is 15, plus one is 16, 
So I actually have 16 over 5 as an improper fraction equals 2 fifths x, okay? And then I multiply by the reciprocal, 5 over 2. So that makes that go away. So x is equal to 16 over 5 times 5 over 2. Again, the 5s are eliminated, they reduce down, and I'm left with 16 over 2, which is simply equal to 8. So you get the same exact thing, but then you're having to convert a mixed number. You first have to add a whole number in a fraction, convert that mixed number into an improper, and then multiply by the reciprocal. So both methods work up to you what you want to do. I prefer multiplying if the denominator for all the fractions is the same. I like just multiplying by the denominator across the whole equation so I have a nice simple equation to work with. Alright, let's look at uh, letter D. We're going to distribute here. Negative 3 times 2x becomes a negative 6x. Negative 3 times negative 8 becomes a positive 24. And that's still equal to 18. So let's subtract 24 from both sides. We have a negative 6x equals. We have two different signs. We're going to find the difference and keep the sign of the larger absolute value. So 24 minus 18 is 6, but it's going to be negative 6. All right. We're going to divide both sides by negative 6. So x equals negative. Divide by negative is a positive. And 6 divided by 6 is 1. So x simply equals 1. All right, and let's do one of these down below for our systems of equations. I'm going to do the letter A. We're going to substitute this value of y into that equation. So we set it up to say negative 2x plus 4 equals 3x plus 9. Um, I don't really want to have a negative x value, so I'm going to go ahead and add 2x to both sides over here to give me a 5x. And I'm going to move the 9 by subtracting 9 from both sides here and here. So that's eliminated. 4 plus a negative 9. Find the difference and keep the larger absolute value. 9 minus 4 is 5, but I'm going to keep it negative. So negative 5 equals 5x. Divide both sides by 5. So I have just x left over here. And x equals 5 divided by 5 is 1, but a negative divided by a positive is a negative. So I know x equals 1. And I want to plug that value into one of the y equations. So let's do this one right here y equals 3x plus 9. So this becomes 3 times negative 1 plus 9. That becomes negative 3 plus 9. And that simply becomes y equals 6. So for our system equation solution, we would write negative 1 comma 6. And that becomes our solution there. All right, that's it for today. Good luck on the rest of them, and we'll see you next time.